see you later. This is a special event. Uh, this is not a, a glitzy event, but it has its own specialness, which is the, the fact that we're celebrating the music of, of Willen and that both choirs have done recordings of Willen's music and that it's the first time that we're working together and doing it in Healy's church. Um, it's, um, I, I don't know, there's, there's a special warmth to me and I guess that's what I'd, I'd like the, uh, the audience to feel the same way about it. First of all, there are a lot of choirs in Canada that still are touched by the memory of Healy Willem. People who have sung for him, people who have known his name, and people who have heard about him, people who have read about him. And so there is in the interest of singers, in the interests of singers, and in the interests of conductors, um, a great respect for the music of Willem. So people are still using it a great deal. Since um, our compact disc of Willem's music has been selling widely, um, we hear from, from all sorts of people who uh, find that they have uh, great comfort or spiritual uh, nourishment, here I am at that word again, uh, from, from this music. I had a letter from England just yesterday uh, from the Church Music Society um, saying how much uh, this particular person enjoyed uh, the recording. And I've had um, letters from the States and from uh, all over Canada of people who uh, are very grateful for this music being available to them in their home. So uh, yes, I think it has um, a quality that uh, it probably will endure. Time will tell. When, when he was dying, and he, he was in the Wellesley Hospital, and, and he was very, very unhappy uh, there in uh, various circumstances, he was having heart attacks and so on, and, and he had gone in for uh, an operation on his eyes, and that, that was not terribly successful. They couldn't uh, fit him up with the new glasses and so on. And uh, so I did my best to get him out of Wellesley and into home where we could look after him and he would be surrounded by his his own things and also he had a commission from I think it was from the National Arts Can Center uh, National Arts Council and he he felt he had to finish that and he he was dying of course I knew that but uh, when I when I <laughs> got him out of prison as it were and he he thanked me for my humanity and he thanked me for my compassion and uh, I said, no, no, you've, you've shown me these two virtues all my life. This is, this is something I can do for you. The Midnight Mass. And he wasn't sure whether he'd be here to play it or not, but he turned up, he came, and I didn't know how they'd ever get him up the gallery stairs because he was 86 and, and pretty shaky, he, not well. And um, he couldn't see. He'd had um, a cataract surgery. He couldn't. He didn't have his glasses as they had to have in those days. And um, he said to me, "Margaret, will you come up and stay beside me at the organ and uh, tell me what key everything's in?" And do you know he played the whole service from memory. That's how well and he knew it. And um, when it came time to conducting, uh, I said you know, do you want me to conduct this and you won't have to get off the organ bench? He said, yes, and then I'll do such and such. And it worked out quite well. And at the very end, uh, <laughs> we had had a hymn here, I guess, at the end of the service. It was in the key of G. And he said, I'm sick of this key of G. He used a stronger word, but anyway. Uh, and suddenly he just went, and he went through the whole cycle of keys, improvising playing such as I'd never heard, pedal work from a man of that age that you couldn't believe. And uh, he came back to the key of G. And uh, 
he said, well, I guess that's it. And I said, uh, and as he got off the organ bench, he patted the top of the organ, and he said, well, goodbye, old girl. He knew he'd never play again. Both St. Mary Magdalene's and the Vancouver Chamber Choir have CDs of Willen's work currently in release on Virgin Classics. They've proven to be a huge commercial and critical success. One suspects that Willen would be both amazed and amused by his enduring superstar status. Now next week, a repeat broadcast of our behind-the-scenes exclusive look at the making of Michael Ondaatje's The English Patient, the movie that's been thrilling audiences across Canada since December. It's the most extravagant production of a Canadian novel to date. 
and it's getting the full Hollywood treatment with a cast which includes Ray Fiennes, Kristen Scott Thomas, and Juliette Binoche. A double winner at the Golden Globes. Next stop, the Oscars? We know we're gonna get a good picture, but we still don't know what the public reaction will be. Next week, an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at the making of The English Patient. Be sure to join us again next week. Until then, thank you for watching and good night. Kaya, a family chronicle.